indie horror scene has certainly left its mark on the gaming industry. From Slender the Eight Pages, to Finds of Freddy's, Vending Machine, and etc., none would be quite the same if these titles never existed. Of course, there are those who try to capitalize on the popularity and success of genre and make more games, movies, etc., that are awful, confusing, boring, and more. If you ask people what kind of crash cash grab game to think of, they'd probably answer probably playtime. I understand that 100%. I do agree that it mainly exists for money for the most part. That's not talk of this, this video. I'm here to shit on this crap fest known as Garden of Bam Bam. Hi, I'm Bolton of Voltage Productions. Here's how to make a game better than Garden of Bam Bam. Garden of Bam Bam is an I mean horror game. About a reliable daycare where everybody mysteriously vanished. You have to investigate the man building to find the truth of the place. Huh. That sounds fairly familiar to a game already pretty unoriginal. Eh, it's probably fine. The gameplay has you find a remote control drone, open doors, and activate buttons on the wall. While being watched by this handsome feller, who knows what you'll find at the Garden of Bam Bam. I know this game popped up through my recommended. Everybody with NOT Bam Bam, by the way, on some sort of elevator. All these videos called it the next Poppy Playtime, so I gotta check out the Steam pages. W wait, pages? Uh, yeah, apparently the creators of the game, the uh, Euphoric Brothers, put up a page for Garden of Bam Bam and Garden of Bam Bam 2. Get this. <laughs> The titular character, Bam Bam, doesn't even appear in the game as a fucking character. He's in some kind of unfunny art on the wall and that's it. He's pretty much missing from the game entirely. Why name the game after a guy who has no actual appearance in game? That's kind of already a problem and I haven't even discussed gameplay. The first game only just came out and there's already a sequel planned. I guess I think the first game is so good to the point it can have a sequel, right? Well, no. When we load up the game, we can immediately see that there's a button to go to the merch store for the game. Okay, that's a big red flag. Clearly, believe this game was meant to make money off of popular Playtime fans. Anyway, as you know, how I mentioned the uh, backstory of the game earlier? Well, um, yeah, the game actually doesn't tell you what the lore is in-game. You're mainly spawned in a kindergarten area with no explanation. You know, when I actually originally played the game, by the way, I stayed in that starting area for 10 minutes because I was very confused. By the way, the footage I'm using is just a full gameplay that completes this shit in 10 minutes. If I spend 10 minutes figuring out how to get out of that initial area in the first place, then you know it's not off to a good start. After getting out of that area, you see that handsome feller again before vanishing into a dark room. I spent another 10 minutes being confused as hell, and then I opened up some playthroughs and played for 10 more minutes before losing all interest in just watching Super Horror Bros playthrough. Anyway, you find this platform, and this fucker that isn't Bam Bam comes up and drags platform down if you want it, ending the game. Okay, so, but what are the general problems with the gameplay? Well, it very evidently copies Poppy Playtime, a game that allegedly copies Benny Ink Machine. The drone is this game's version of the grab pack and this handsome fella is flying away. It's something that I believe happened in Poppy Playtime with Huggy Wuggy. This game was very confusing for me and quite frankly, boring. I didn't enjoy it. Oh yeah, d did I mention that there are doors with literally no fucking purpose? Yeah, that confused me a lot. A lot of the mechanics didn't really make sense and weren't enjoyable. I mentioned a chase sequence the game has earlier, by the way, because it's like 20 seconds long at most before having some bird thing. Oh, yeah, wait, sorry, the handsome feller meet the same fate as Huggy Wuggy. The lack of originality isn't really my main problem here, though. It's that there's pretty much no real build up to the chase, and it is literally so anticlimactic. Then you go into Austria, the elevator. 
this green bitch comes out of nowhere after we not teased at all in the game. And then it ends. Again, lack of build up here. They want to have something like this. Don't pull it out of your ass. The game abruptly ends. Not, not even super horrible expecting it to end for like 30 minutes. And even questioned if the sequel was a DLC. What the heck? The emergency lights, guys. Oh no, look! What is that? It's that, that giant green monster. I can't remember his name. Look at him! Ah! Oh my god. What do we do? Were we meant to press the button then? I didn't know what to do then, guys. He's dragged us down into the pit. That's that monster. I don't remember his name. The big green one. Is that it? Thanks for playing. Wish list for sequel here. Surely they mean the second chapter, right? Because that can't have been the full game. We didn't even open all the doors. Of course. You could try to excuse the game's crappy quality by saying that it is probably our first game. Which, in most cases, I'd actually excuse all the problems with the game. Thing is though, this is not their first game. This is literally their 10th full release. You think that means the developers are experienced? That they're not. A lot of their projects take a month on average to create. You think they learn as they go, but if Garden of Bam Bam is this awful, but I doubt any of their early games are any better. They clearly want money if they release that many games that quickly. By their 10th release, they should at least be competent enough to actually try. But nope, they don't. The Zeke was probably going to release in like February or March or even April if they try to actually get good. Now, I can see where this shit show can be upgraded though, however, and that's the main purpose of this video. So let's take a look at that. The game's lore is hundreds and absent in the current state it's in. In this version, when you click the game, an open cutscene with a child hiding inside of this handsome feller will play before they are trapped in there, which would lead to that child's eventual death. It would then show the protagonist, a distraught parent. The protagonist promises to avenge their missing child. Then it goes to the entrance, which I've designed here to make it look different and actually unique from Poppy Playtime. The player finds the drone with instructions on how it works. They leave the room for the drone and I sure it's a new concept for this thing. Hallucinations. The first one is of that green feller dragging a screaming, bleeding child through the main door. Then the hallucination ends. The player uses the drone and activate two buttons to open the door with, the, with both buttons around the actual door because for some reason one is on the other side of the door. I mean the room. Sorry. Once they enter the main hall, they experience another hallucination. This one is showing the Ban Ban mascot stringing the innocent child before the hallucination stops. Yeah, but Ban Ban's in this my this version of the game now. They enter that colorful room that has a robot version of that handsome feller. I forgot to mention that you need to find six eggs. I found them really hard to find, so to fix that, I'd make the room way smaller. They reduce the amount of need eggs to four, but they're bigger too. So anyway, once all the eggs are put in, the orange card will pop out like how it does in game. It will also cause an additional organ of the child who hid that feller all that time ago to pop out. The player gets the hammer like normal and gets to board up area, which I've changed to like a boiler furnace area because a gap room in a, in a daycare doesn't make much sense. Entering causes a hallucination. This time, Ban Ban throwing an adult into the furnace, burning them alive with their shrieks of pain, ending the hallucination. After finding a part where you need to identify the character's right color, you now instead click on the card colored crayon. After this, you get the purple key card. You then hear a noise, and you see that handsome fellow behind you. This time, you need to outrun it in the area. You hide from it, few times and you eventually trick it and turning into that furnace again. The player leaves the room and sees another hallucination. This time you see that green guy dragging a kid into the 
purple room before the hallucination ends. You enter the room and see a clipboard file, Project Capture of the Corpse, documenting a plan and care at the real attentions with the daycare. You find a normal elevator, and go down before suddenly stopping. You look up to see the actual Bam Bam, not hallucination, axe in hand, drop up the elevator cables and send you into the pits below. The final cutscene shows the green guy dragging you to an uncertain fate. That is the end of my version of this game. Thanks for watching our video on Garden of Bam Bam. If you liked the video, great. However, I don't plan on covering Bam Bam again until the sequel comes out. Either way, I hope this video gave you or any aspiring developers the right idea for when you make your first game. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all next time. Volton, 